So let me explain the setup that I have right here. So we have the Falcon controller, which is powered by 12 volt power supply, which is providing power to the board and to the pixels. On this side, we have another power supply, which is providing power injection to my pixels. Now, you don't need power injection for just 50 pixels. You need it for 100 or 200 or more. Uh, this is a very common setup for our shows. So I'm gonna put it in test mode. And now we have a power wash sequence running. No problems at all. But watch what happens when I switch this power supply off. What's going on? The Falcon player still turn on. What's happening? Well, allow me to explain. This power supply is now providing the voltage to my pixels and then it's back feeding into this pixel port which is connected to V1 which then goes into my power supply and because we have a bridge between positive 1, 2 and 3 then it's coming to V2 and this is the point of entry to power my Falcon controller. So this is keeping my Falcon controller alive. Now, is this an issue? Well, you be the judge. I mean, we have 12 volts coming this way. Chances are that by the way it comes out, we're gonna have lower than 12 volt because this is burning some energy, right? So we might have 10 volt, eight volts, or even lower. And if we have more pixels plugged into our pixel ports, which we will, the voltage is gonna drop even lower and that might cause the Falcon controller to start doing weird things. Now, we could potentially connect the external power in here and provide the power through this port, but it's gonna be the same thing because there's gonna be a connection to this power supply, so it's gonna backfeed again. So that's not a solution. But I do have a solution for this problem, and it's very simple. But for now, I guess we're good. Let's keep it this way, right? I mean. What can go wrong? We've been doing this for years. I want to start this video with a real life demo. So now we are on the same page when it comes to power backfitting into our controller. Hi, I'm Trevi Lights. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you have not done so, I will highly appreciate if you can subscribe to my channel. There are more videos to come this year. Um, ever since I started working with um, this light show, one of my main concerns was power injection. And it's probably yours as well, if you are starting into this hobby. Um, like having two power supplies, you know, positives connected, negatives, and now an extra power supply in the controller. I mean, is that gonna be an issue or not? So I did a lot of research, watched a lot of videos, I read a lot. And I came to a conclusion that there are two ways of thinking. There are two schools of thought when it comes to power injection. But to get a better understanding about these two schools of thoughts, let's watch the next video clip. So here we have the same exact layout as the initial demo that I show you at the beginning of this uh, video. So pretty much we have the power supply, which is powering the Falcon controller. And then we have a second power supply, which is injecting power to the string of lights. Now, we all know that we need power injection because uh, the voltage is going to drop as these uh, uh, pixels are burning through that uh, current. Okay, so we need to inject. And there could be more than one uh, injection point. Okay, this is the setup that I've been uses, using for years. No problems at all. So this is option number one now some of the people are doing this is exactly the same thing except that they make a cut on the positive um, wire so this prevents the current to backflow into the controller so now this power supply is powering um, the Falca controller and providing power just to the first 50 or 100 pixels. Now, I never done this, but what I've heard is that the brightness might be different from this set and from this set because now 
uh, well, you're not sharing the same current, the same uh, voltage between these two lines, okay? Uh, but this is still okay. So, what now? So, what can we do to prevent this backflow of uh, current into our controller? Well, I have a solution for you to try, and that is by using a diode. Now, what is a diode? A diode is an electronic component that only allows the current to flow in one direction. It, wanna, it will not allow the current to flow in the other direction. And if you look closely, there's a band around it, and that band is on the output side. So it's gonna flow that way, but it's not gonna allow the current to come this way. So you probably already know what I'm gonna do with this diode, right? So let's give it a try. Let's watch the next video. So now that we know that we can potentially use some diodes, what can we do with them? Well, we can pretty much put one of die one diode at the beginning of the of the string. Uh, imagine that there's no cut in here, and that will prevent the voltage or the current to flow back into our controller in case this power supply dies. Or if you have a cut in here. Well, you can potentially put another diode or put a diode in here and now you can share the power or the voltage from this power supply coming this way but it will block whatever current tries to back up into our controller because we have a diode in here. So either we can try one over here and one over here. So why don't we go ahead and try one of those diodes at the beginning of the string and see what happens. So let's, let's do that. Okay, and we're back with the same exact setup. Now we have the diode on the positive of our pixel port. So now watch what happens when I switch this power supply off. Now the Falcon controller switches off because the diode is preventing the current to backflow into our board. Now the pixels will remain lit because of this power injection and, and it stay in the last color uh, that the data sent. So this will stay lit. The only way to turn them off is if you switch that power supply off or you switch back uh, the power on the Falcon controller. But let's take a closer look at that diode. So let's check the voltage. So here we have 11.95 volts and on the other side we only have 008 millivolts. So it's not even one volt. Uh, so this is blocking the current to backflow into our pixel port. So now we have a way to prevent that backflow of current to come into our controller. Now, if you are one of those persons that like to cut that positive cable, maybe you can build something like this. I have the pigtails and I have a diode in between. So now, if you place this in between that cut, you can allow the current to flow in the right direction, but it will prevent it to go into the wrong direction. Now, this diode is rated for 15 amps going the right way and 45 volts going the wrong way, meaning that it will prevent up to 45 volts to go into the right direction. So this is perfect for our show because we will never have 45 volts coming the wrong way, right? But I guess at the end of the day, it's up to you if you want to try a diode in your show. I think I'm going to give it a try this year and see how it goes. So meanwhile, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll talk to you later.